Radio. Alright guys, <clears throat> that was shitty. <clears throat> we gotta do like <laughs> voice warm up. How now brown cow? How now brown cow? Peter picked a pack of pickled peppers. <laughs> you know I'm recording this shit. Sally sells, she sells by the seashore. <laughs> I speak perfect English. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ron Burgundy. San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. We're having a lot of fun because this build was a lot of fun. Alright guys, Mr. 26, blah 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 blah. Fucking tongue twister. <laughs> I'm like underwater. Anyways, let's go. You know who I am. Alright. Do they? Do they really? <laughs> Alright guys, Mr. 26 checking back in. I'm here with my friend Nestor. Hi. Owner and uh well yeah, owner of Planet Drift Shop. And we're gonna go over the build that he put together. Uh, amazing build. This car is an 8,000 RPM Screamer. It could probably go a little bit more, but we're playing a little bit safe. No, we can't go like no. consequences. <laughs> There's no more power after a man. Not with stock Springs. Cams. We need springs and cams. Um, I think cams are the limiting factor in this one. I don't know shit. That's why I default to him. And he just like, no, no, we can't do that. So, yeah, he knows his shit. And yeah, let me let him talk about the build and everything that went into this car because it is amazing and the history of this car is interesting as well. So let me cut to Nestor. Oh, hey, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll it. Let's, let's, yeah, go, I go, guess, go. roll whatever. the punches. Let's go. So here we have a 96 Miata. It's a 1.8. Um, 14.1 compression is what it was I was allegedly told it had um, I haven't looked into it to verify I mean it feels pretty snappy and peppy so I I feel like it's pretty spot-on but originally this car came in um, it was a, a crank snow start you know another shop had it for over a year they couldn't figure out what exactly was going on sight unseen I'm like well why don't we just put throttle bodies on it you know I'm like yeah it, it'll definitely run with those and I'll fix up the uh, wiring and whatnot because they were they were claiming it was a wiring fault which it, it wasn't but you know it is what it is so we end up putting throttle bodies on it um, I did the whole setup these, these I think they are CBR 1000 or GSXR 1000 uh, throttle bodies I'm not sure which one they are exactly um, but yeah, it's it's a really nice kit. Uh, we have the Piper Cross filter that goes along with it. We're running dual catch cans because if you don't run dual catch cans, the the crankcase and these things get a little funky. So I run that. Uh, we also finished off with an Aeromotive fuel regulator, and we're running a GM Flex fuel sensor. So this car is fully capable of running 93 gas as well as running complete E85. And you don't got to reflash anything. It'll just calibrate based off the voltage off of the sensor. So that's pretty neat for this car. Um, we also put Audi RA coils just to get rid of the ugly stock coils that really don't work too well in the back. And also, you know, get rid of any probability that it could be a spark issue on the car. We also did the crank sensor with the trigger wheel. So we ran basically, this is, I like to use the Mazda Protege. I think it's a 323 wheel. Um, it's a 32 minus, or I think it's a 36 minus one wheel. Um, I run those, I get them from Mazda for like $20, so they're really cheap, easy to get. So I run those. This one's running a 99 um, crank uh, sensor. And then it's all wired up. 
connects back to where the ECU factory wiring is. So we got rid of that from the CAS module. So CAS, the CAS in these cars usually controls the crank signal and the cam phase, but in this case the crank phase is going to be off of that and it's just the CAS module is now just controlling the cam phase of the engine, which is real nice. Um, it gives you more resolution on the tuning portion of it. I like it, so I try and do all my builds like that. Um, then we have this beautiful Chase Bay's coolant reservoir. The factory one was crusty. Nobody had anything else in stock, and I like putting Chase Bay stuff on a lot of my projects, so I definitely always recommend their products. Real nice. Um, and then this is a second catch can. This is just a vent tube where the other one is a vacuum chamber. You can run dual vents, but then they just collect a lot of water and just have a smoky smoke stack coming out. So I don't like running two vents. And then we have, I think these are CX Racing headers with the, what is it called? The X, S, unequal, unequal length. Yeah, the un unequal length headers. Um, they sound interesting. I'm not a, I'm not sold on them quite yet, but you know, it, it makes for an interesting build, I guess. And then, you know, you got the hose real close, so there's always that fun aspect of the danger in your life. And yeah, I think that's everything engine-wise that we've done to it. Um, oh yeah, the coolant reroute, obviously. You can't really see it from yeah. here. It's, <laughs> it's back there, I promise. I promise it's back there. When, uh, when, when we're going to do a review of my car, and we're going to, because I'm, I'm changing to the same reroute that's on this car, We'll show the differences between the the Q Max reroute and the new one that I got. So, which is the same one this car is running as well. So, yeah, that's in another video. But you guys see you you guys will see the coolant reroute. Yeah, I mean, I guess that covers up everything. It's sitting on BC coilovers and tire with the track. What, what are TR racing wheels? I think that's yeah, what they're called. Uh, tire rack, the 15 TR by yeah TR Motorsports. That's so the 15 by 7 wheels from TR Motorsports which are discontinued now. I just happened to have a extra set laying around that I was no longer using and he liked them a lot so I sold them to him and now they're on this car. Which is funny because those wheels came off another car that had throttle bodies as well. So I think those wheels and they just they just like cars that have throttle bodies because it's just that's <laughs> all they go on. That's all I put them on. Throttle body cars. It's yep. interesting. But yeah. Another one was carbureted. Yeah, that one was a little, that was silly. That was me just like, hey, what can I do with a Miata? And I threw these Yamaha R1 carburetors off of like a 99 motorcycle. And I bought like every jet in the world. And there's no information on how to do that. So like, I'm like literally poking around, figuring out <laughs> what I need to do to make it run. So that was a whole interesting debacle, but fun nonetheless. I feel like these ITV cars, I mean, they're so fun to drive. They're so responsive that like they don't make a lot of power it's not by any means like so like fast but like it's fun enough to just have fun without really breaking the law <laughs> yeah. I think the only thing I do extra to this I definitely would do some nitrous that's the only thing I'd add you know a little bit of spice yeah just a little more you know just just a, just a smidge <laughs> but that's just me I like the chaos and the added like oh my god factor on the whole thing but yeah, here it is, 96 Miata. Yay. I will say, after being a passenger in this car for a couple times now, as we were tuning it, or as he was tuning, Nestor was tuning it, uh, it is neck snapping. The throttle response is instantaneous. It is literally at your fingertips. It's bam, on off, on off, on off. And it's, it's incredible. It's something I've never experienced in any other car because I've never been in any other car that has ITBs. So, very different feeling. Uh, very nice though, especially when you rev it up past red line. Well, it's like, it's ooh! Not past red line. It's just past, well, past the, the OEM. It's past right. the recommended <laughs> yeah. red line. But, you know, recommendations are just rules to be broken. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just yeah. like speed limit signs, right? Yeah, they're just suggestions. There you go. <laughs> but I didn't say that. Follow the speed limit. Yeah. Speeding is speeding is bad. Don't do it. Yeah, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> oh, and the fans. You changed the fans too. Oh yeah, we did do spow fans. That was fun too. Yeah. So these are 12-inch spow brushed motors. I mean, we need light. Okay. I didn't bring a flashlight because we're cavemen. Yeah. So they're spow brushed fans. They're the 12 inches. Um, originally, the car had uh, Mishimoto fans. 
which I didn't really like them. They didn't really pull a lot of torque or a lot of air through the radiator. So we retained the Mishimoto shroud and I just put these fans on top of them basically, on top of the, the housing and just kind of you know, bolted it down. And it works. The, the car cools really well now. Um, before we were not able to get anywhere under 194 degrees um, with them running. And then I also rewired them too so that way it's dual fans kick on versus the one single fan because one of them is like a cooling fan, the other is like only for AC. It's a weird setup. And this car has no AC or power steering. Yeah, so like the other fan would literally have just been there for like cool points. And I've run into issues where if you only run one fan, they kind of melt down the motors because there's just one fan is not enough to pull any air through it. So I run dual fans and then I run them basically through the same trigger so that they're in sync. So when one fan turns on, the other one turns on, you don't got to worry about the AC fan kicking on or not. And then when you tune them, you can also turn them on with the AC, but since this car has no AC, I deleted all that. So, yeah, that's another thing we did. But yeah, it's you know it's pretty nice. So it was a radium fuel, fuel rail with the flow force injectors. I think we did three, three. 380s are what we put on it. Yeah. Um, every fuel line has been, all the factory rubber lines have been removed and replaced with uh, E85 compatible line. So here you'll see all the dash sixes that we ran on the front half of it. In the rear, we are running a, I think it's a 5 8 to a dash 6 adapter to the, because the fuel filter that we put on it is a dash 6. So I have two fittings that convert the, the 5 16 which is stock line, to the um, dash 6 filter. And then I have it running back to the stock line. So it's pretty much in the same spot as the OEM uh, fuel filter goes, but it's a better, you know, filter for E85 with that in mind. And then the fuel lines that are on the top hat were also removed and replaced with the 85 line as well. And then we so put this one, tank. we did put a new tank. Um, when I pulled the tank out of this car, there was a lot of rust inside of it. The car's been sitting for a while, so that's kind of normal when you when you work on these. I've had a lot of these where they've sat for like one, two, three years, and then the tanks are completely just shredded. So usually when you put a fuel pump in it, you can get around... Sometimes I get a week out of them. Sometimes I get like one or two like on and offs before they completely clog up. It all really depends how much junk is in the tank. Um, but this one was bad enough. The guy just wanted everything done. He's been waiting to get this car back for a really long time now. So he's like, just put a new tank in it. I'm like, all right, let's do a new fuel pump. You know, everything's going to be brand new in the, in the fuel system. So you have no worries. So this car is basically, everything's new in this car. He's got a new clutch in it from what I understand. Uh, new engine, I mean, new fuel system. I mean, it's it's ready to go. It's a, basically a turnkey. Um, you know, it's a really all-around fun car. You can drive wherever you really want. So, yeah. That's pretty much the build breakdown by the builder himself. Oh, I didn't build it. Nestor the builder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, this, this car is fun. This car is fun without a doubt. So, we're going to get some more noises, some more beautiful sounds.
after? Like we just like recorded and like. Sure, I could do whatever <laughs> voice you want. <laughs> you want the chipmunks? I got that. Uh, I don't want to. Put in five times speed. We messed around that stuff. Hi guys, this is 26. I'm here with my buddy Nestor, owner of Planet Drift, and we're gonna go. He's gonna go through the screamer that he put together. Um, car's amazing. I want one. He wants one. Uh, yeah. So let's go. Go. All right. So this car, I think the guys had it for five years. Out of those five years, it ran maybe the first year. Put a new motor in it. He drove it for a couple months, and then all of a sudden it stopped working. We had no idea. So we took it out of the shop. It sat there for about a year or two or three. <laughs> we restart. Okay, my mind. 